Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have something that is completely new to me and that is a micro amp power monitor. And that is from a brand, it's a little company. It is from uh, Rejoey, the logo is a nice friendly dog. And they are specialized in weak signal processing. For instance, for uh, Internet of Things or other little processors just to see how much power they use and when. And uh, yeah, it looks like a nice fancy box. Uh, power switch in the back. I prefer them in the front, of course. But it looks like a proper box. It has a big display. We have a course and a fine button. It's almost like it is a little uh, power supply. I went very quickly through the back. But there is a USB here, so we can connect it to the computer. It comes with a power supply. It is 26 volts, 2 amp. I'm not sure where they picked 26 volts, but maybe they wanted minus 13 and plus 13, and then they sort of meet up in the middle. Uh, switch it on. This looks pretty nice. White on orange or yellow, and white on uh, on green. This looks like the the setting that it is now on. We have here a current readout. So it seems sort of a power supply. And here we have some statistic values. Yeah, it actually looks a little bit like a power supply. So you can set the voltage here and uh, all big steps here, small steps here. That is fine, you have micro uh, amps readout, and I think it can deliver up to 2 amps. But uh, what happens if you just connect something? I think if I push here, the output goes on. Yes, the output goes on. We have here that the output is switched on, and we have the micro amp readout. It is jumping a little bit, quite a bit even. But it is around uh, 11. And here we have in the statistics, we have the averages, the max. And here we have the one second average, and that is a lot more stable already. So this setup that I have now with this resistor uh, uses around 11 microamps. So I was playing a little bit with this uh, sort of power supply, and then I think. Yeah, what is so special about this device? Because if you want a proper stable power supply, well, I have a few here, so that is not a problem. If I want to read microamps, then, well, you have a nice uh, excellent meter. You can read your microamps. So what is so special? I, I, I was sure I might missed somewhere or something. Because these people were so, well, first of all, they were very friendly to send me this device, but they were so enthusiastic about it. And, and these people do, do power monitoring, weak signal processing. So there had to be something more. And these people are very friendly and generous. But the, the only thing they are not so generous about is their specifications. And then I found them on Amazon, I believe the link. And there I found some specifications. One thing that stood out that is the sample rate is 10K, so it does 10,000 samples per second. And yeah, it seems to jump a little bit, and you have here an average of, uh, of uh, one second. But how do we get these high samples? Because that is actually quite interesting. Because your multimeter, if it is a proper one, it samples like 10 times a second, some even three. And if you have really good ones, it maybe goes to 100. But this one does 10,000. So then the magic is probably in the software. So let's have a look. So I downloaded uh, the software from uh, their website. When I started the software the first time, it was all in Chinese, but it is very easy to find. It is the, it is the last option here when you start the software, and you just set it to English. And then it's all fine. And here we can see we have a huge scale in time. And here we have all the milliamps, microamps, as small as you want it to go. So first we're going to connect the USB cable. 
Well, if you have uh, Windows 10, like I have, then it should actually work immediately. If you have an older version, like Windows 7, then I think you first need to install .NET 4.7. Uh, but I have Windows 10, so I can just connect it. So I will just put one cable in the back of a device. I plug in the computer, and you see the, the device is switched on. And I have already opened here the, the device manager. So I can actually see what's going on. And it created COM9 here. So we know, okay, the device is COM9, it installed pretty fast. Well, that was not really the interesting part, because the interesting part is actually the monitoring of very low power devices. And I have here a temperature sensor. And this runs on two AA batteries right there. So that would be three volts, and I'm going to power it with this power supply. And because it's a temperature sensor, it will try to look for its base station and it will send every x time it will send a message to the base station this is the temperature this is the humidity and we should be able to see that so what we need to do is take the batteries out of course and then we need to connect and i need to find the positive that is right here so let me just these cables came with uh, with the power supply or with the power monitor. Let's just call it the power monitor. And we need to set it to 3 volts because two batteries, 3 volts. So then this is the negative. Let's connect that here. Okay. We just leave it as it is. It is switched off. Okay, so we have everything set up, I think. Um, let's do 10 seconds, then we can see the line uh, come. And we start with one micro amp, and we can do this for a minute. And we just do auto zoom on the current. Power supply is 3 volts, it is switched off. Let's just start. So I start. Here it is. Oh, it immediately is trying to call. I think we are out of scale. Can I somehow? Yes, we can. Oh, cool. Kijk. Okay, so here it starts. It probably tries to call to the base station and then it sends the temperature. Calling base station. It's doing something. And then. can zoom in a bit. Cool. Should one be the temperature and the other one the humidity? Or is it still trying to call the base? I'm not sure. I don't have the base here, so it's really calling in the dark. Well, I have here another device. It is uh, just to switch my power plugs on and off. And I wonder if we can see the difference, of course, in standby or transmitting. But maybe we can see even the difference between on and off if we can zoom in that much. That was pretty cool. You can monitor really up a very low level. And uh, if you think about uh, what I do with weak signal processing or Internet of Things, 
uh, let's say you program something in Arduino and you want to run it on a battery or don't want to charge it all the time. And with this device, you can actually monitor it. Maybe if you write your code more efficient, it will um, use uh, less power. Or like with this one, as we could see, well, we, it was sending every 10 seconds the temperature. And every time you saw a peak in the current. So what, instead of you do this every 10 seconds, you do it every 30 seconds or every minute. And then you don't have that little peak every time and then it will use also less current but with arduinos it's much more interesting also to optimize your code because that maybe well i'm not a programmer but maybe instead of doing a, a silly weight loops to keep the processor busy that that will also cost extra energy because it is costing cycles but maybe if you use uh, your clock just a weight statement or something instead of a silly delay loop and that that will save cycles and save batteries and you will be able to see that i think with this device okay that was playing with it now we have a look inside and it is the emk850 you, you can't find it on the front somehow and uh, well, it's nice with cables. Yeah, my only comment is uh, switch in the front. It looks proper done, properly done. I was just now testing with two simple devices because, but you can imagine all the possibilities that are there, especially with uh, IoT, with Internet of Things, Arduino programming maybe. You can really monitor in the smallest or smallest uh, detail. That was the microamp power monitor from uh, Reed Joey. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.